33. So if she was up front, she would take less than that. Which I think is going to be the way to go. Um, I think the vul- Oh, it might just be on him! I was thinking the vulnerable was just on whoever's first, but you're right, it's probably just on him. So I just want to leave Shara up front. So what I should do is I should rock out first to generate the block, but and then just Shimmer Strike and then unload all her attacks. Headbangs, no reason to use them right now. I mean, I could, I guess, and just store up, but um, I want to leave them in my hands so that the rock out is stronger. Which, my rock out must be in my draw pile. Oh, that's perfect, actually. Yeah, so I never want to play these headbangs until it's time for the finisher. Eat more bleeds, punk. We have lethal next turn? Mm. What is this? Cloak Hunter is enraged when under half life. Oh, good! All right, he's going to swing for a lot of damage and kill us if we don't do anything right now. Okay, again, I don't think there's any reason why we don't Dragon Spirit. I think what we do is we rock out, and then we can, we'll can put Shara back at the front. I think then we'll survive. Hold on. Because we'll have a third headbang. The rock out will give us six block. So he's gonna swing for he's gonna swing for thirty. Well, if I defend as well, then we'll have we'll have enough. So he'll swing for twenty-four. So we will survive, regardless of who's up front. In which case, Soraka will technically take slightly less, and Shara might be the one to like kill him more. Do we have lethal? Maybe if we do enough swaps. The headbangs don't matter because um, he doesn't have an attack. Like, it gives him more power in his next attack. Sirocco's next attack. Sirocco doesn't have an attack currently. So there's no reason to play it now. Rock out, lunge, dance, lethal. I don't think it's lethal, because remember, we don't do the damage as is. It does a bleed for half as much. So I don't think we have lethal regardless. But yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll rock out, defend, and like we'll just play the rest. And we're going to survive. I don't think we're going to kill this turn. I don't think there's any efficiencies. One way or the other. front before I attack or not. There's ally damage, you're right. Is that going to be enough? 63 bleed, so he's going to have 11 left. Nope, he's going to survive. But so will we. I already used Alacrity. We used it right up front to get bleed. Anyway, we've got lethal now, so nothing matters. Oh, here we go. Let, for style points. Uh, oh, it only plays one at a time, and would cost money. So if I, like, Shimmer Strike first... Oh, where am I? Wait, what is happening? We're getting plot development. It didn't... A worthy foe. Okay. Alright, we got stacks of pages. We got a brush. What is this thing? Choose a pile. Okay, either I can have these three cards here. A duel. Charge attacks the leading enemy. Cyclone Lariat. Is this like a rare card? Probably with like this golden style. Uh, melee. Attack for eight. Whenever you gain block this turn, deal eight damage to the leading enemy. And Triton Lyricist. Ally Spiritless. So he has yeah, no spirit. Add headbang to your hand at the start of your turn. Or, we can get the perfect diamond. Gain seven block. Ignore that much damage taken next turn. Swap to the front. Here is share block total. Wait. Do we... Do we just get seven block every turn for free? Is that what this is? Oh, is it... Or no, is that a gem that we add to a card? We slot it into a gem. Yes, you're right. Still, that's pretty damn good. I like the lyricist, though. I think we're gonna get the gym. I like it. Fully heals both heroes, clear all wounds. Hooray! Treasure. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
Stone of Yalmir. All the equipped heroes' cards gain retain. Don't discard this card at the end of your turn. Eh. Ogre Cleaver. Whenever the equipped hero deals 20 damage in a single hit, inflict 5 bleed. Okay, so that would be very good if we got all those 25 damage attacks for Sirocco, but we don't really. Fairy of Flute. Energy is stored between turns. I think that's the one, right there. Pile of Gold. And Sephir's Cloak, Legendary. Whenever the hero below is below 50% hit point, they gain 3 power. Well, I think we've got to put it on um, Shara because she attacks more. Her having power is more meaningful, and it'll buff her ally. Nice find. Sephir. Oh, this is a new hero! We just unlocked a new hero. This is someone else we can play as. Shakes says, How long? How long have I been here? We don't know, but we're here to help. It seems like we are all stuck in this place. Come with us. We could use your strength. <laughs> Very well, but consider this a temporary alliance. Sephir, Blood Tyrant will now be available in your base camp. Blood Tyrant. Excellent. Lost in the Oversky, Chapter 2. Boss becomes ally. It's like when you beat a fighting game and then you unlock the boss as a playable character. Uh, we've arrived among the floating islands of the Oversky. Watch your step. Ancient primal magic keeps these islands above the clouds. I don't, I'm not getting voice for him, I should. They are chained together so as to not float away from one another. The creatures here are normally docile, but have become agitated by the rogue book. Find your way carefully. You like my voice? Okay, what are we going to put the perfect diamond on? It'd be nice if we could put it on rock out, but it only had the one, the one slot. I think we want to put it on something repeatable, so not an ally. It might make sense to add it to a card that already blocks. On the other hand, what about Dragon Spirit, which is free? We're going to cast Dragon Spirit literally every single turn. Yeah, the other zero, exactly. So every single time Dragon Spirit comes up, we're going to cast it. So having it give us some free block is pretty nice. The diamond makes you move to the front. Right, because it adds block. That's not terrible. What we do want, though, is ideally we'd like more stuff for Sharon to move her towards the back. But we do have the kickflip and we do have her built-in ability. We want her to move as often as possible. So no, I think I like this idea. A lot. Dang, a Dragon Spirit gives two Courage, which is nice. Like, I think um, each Courage just gives you... Just having Courage just gives you one extra energy. Having multiple stacks doesn't give us more energy, but it makes it last longer. So now it'll last for two turns when you cast it instead of just one. Putting a Boomerang on the Dragon Spirit would be insane if we get another one. Like, holy cow. Is this a pool of something? No, okay, dead. We got a shop. Well, let's take a look at the shop. We might want to still save some money here. Mystic Egg, new ally. Start of each turn, gain one spirit. Sacrifice. Just destroys it. Draw a card and gain one energy for each spirit this has. It's expensive. Like, you're, you're basically giving up an entire turn so that you can have a really explosive turn later on. You have to draw this on, like, a turn when a boss isn't doing anything or something like that. I don't know. I'm betting there's a lot of really great builds for it. But that seems a little bit rough. Um, Lava Surge um, Axlotl. Oh, yeah, those little uh, lizards. Or salamanders? I don't know what they are. Um, so it's an ally that's aggressive. Whenever this gains spirit, gain five times as much. Okay. We still don't have anything that can generate spirit during a game, though. Clash. Attack for seven, gain seven block. It's quite cool. There's a Horse Master ally for position swapping. Maybe this is the time we finally get it. Again, I might just save the money for now. Climax. Charge. Attack for 17. End the turn. This will leave Char up front, but it's good damage. Reload. Range. Okay. Ranged is good because that does trigger our mecha cannon. Adds two daggers to our hand. Now, phase stone, after you play this, return it to the top of your deck at the end of your turn. I think we save up for a phase stone and put it on our um, on our free thing with seven block. Yeah, phase stone on dragon spirit would be nuts. Vault key. Extra card when drafting from vault. Ogre toe. I mean, permanent items are always really nice. But yeah, I think we phase stone the dragon stuff. Daggers also synergize for headbang. Oh, because we can just generate a ton of power. That's true. Um, I could check the drag. I really want to buy the phase stone as early as possible. What is this thing? Yak hide. Oh, each turn gain three block. Just 
flat out. That's very good. Need what, 175? This is also guaranteed to reveal a gem now. Hey, what's over there? If there is one. Rather than brush here, I think I'm going to do some fighting and hopefully we can get a straight line ink. You don't want to be dragon spearing every turn. It eats a draw for no reason. It gives us seven block every time we do it at zero cost. And there could be some turns we decide just not to cast it. Right? So if we've if we've got a bunch of stacks of courage, so we've got enough courage that's going to last for the entire fight, and we don't need the free block. Is it 150? I thought it was 175. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, 175. Ah! Zack, not so smart. <laughs> it's always a good idea, you know, when you're a streamer and things like that. Should always try to insult your viewers. <laughs> it's really, it's really good. <laughs> I'm so bad at my job. <laughs> okay. So in the ideal world, we do want to start with Shara in the back. She has a lot more abilities that moves her forward than backwards. Um, what the hell is this? I mean, it's very... It's an Enkindler! It's an Enkindler, you guys, from Mass Effect. Um, enemy intent. Yes, okay, yes. Wants to attack and debuff. For 18 damage! Delicate. Whenever the heroes play a card, take 6 damage. Okay, it has a ton of hit points. I think we just played literally every single card, ending with Rock Out, so that Sorak was in the front to take the damage. Alternatively, if I played Rock Out sooner, I would get one extra swap for a card that does bonus damage for every time we swap. Blasto, yes! But I think I'd rather put him in front for the extra two points of dodge, and he does have a bucket more hit points. So, yeah, and I don't think order matters. I mean, I'm, we want to Shimmer Strike before we do any other attack. But I, other than that, yeah, I think I think I'm good. Oh, um, I gotta remember I can do my little swappy do. Hold on, which we should 100% use. I gotta remember this. So what I'm actually gonna want to do is move her to the front, rock out uh, to move him back. I mean, use the rest of her abilities, sure, fine, and then finish the turn by using her ability to send backwards. That way we get one extra swap, which should be okay. Yeah. No need to, to headbang right now. We want to just stack them up. Um, we may as well defend. We'll take no damage, which is going to be nice. And then we'll swap back over here, and that'll be the turn. And then he's going to take a bunch of bleed damage. We're not going to take any damage. He's buffing, or debuffing. Aura of Weakness. Yeah, okay. So this is why I was confused about the other one with the vulnerability. The Aura of Weakness is just whoever's in the front deals less damage. Period. It's not a debuff on an individual character. Um, okay, Bravery is really good, because it's ranged and does the positional swap. We're not going to be able to move Shara to the back, unfortunately. We have no more positional changes, nor do we have any block stuff. Although we might end up using the headbang here to do some bonus damage. I think I will. I'll just headbang and then use a strike. Um, hold on. I forgot the debuff. One of the cards I used, I think I could have done a strike from the back with her to do slightly more damage. Am I blocking all the damage? I didn't realize I had 10 freaking block. Oh, I forgot we have, um, the Yak Hide? Oh yeah, right here. All right, and he's dead next turn from bleed. What is this? Tends to piercing attack. Any unblocked damage will damage both heroes, but it doesn't matter because you're going to die instantly from bleed. Um, there's nothing that we benefit from from like casting a bunch ahead of time and, and doing you know whatever the heck. It doesn't matter at all. So. But, oh. 
Next! Victory! Gold and Royal Ink. Five spaces in a straight line. We still don't... We're too short from our item that we want. Now, I want to get this gem as quickly as possible. I could just Royal Ink to here. Sort of a waste of a couple of tiles worth, though. What would feel a lot better is to Royal Ink this way to do a reveal. That five, you can get to the shrine. Which, what is the shrine? It's not the sky tower, not the gemstone. What is the shrine? I'm assuming you're, you're just talking about one of those things. Yeah, go for the sky tower. I think that's probably a good idea. Reveal as much as possible. Okay. That's what I assumed. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing something. Not that I would ever miss something while playing a game, ever. Okay, no, sky tower first, dummy. What is happening? Fugaro the thief. He has stolen one of your treasures. Did he? Or is it a treasure we were supposed to get? He took the cannon. He did take the cannon. Alright, well, good news for him. We've got a new gem we can use. Um, I have enough to do a draft. Actually, I could draft twice. Well, we're going to buy the gem no matter what. We may, before we slot it into anything, we might want to do the drafts and see what um, what unlocks, because we might want to use it there. But yeah, we'll pick up the Phase Stone, because it is pretty good. Oh, the Crystallized Etheria is also very nice. Okay, I guess I can only draft once. And then there's a draft spot over there. High five! combo so we can make it free gain a courage we don't really need to gain more courage we're not the cowardly lion clash i still like it tax for seven blocks for seven um and then this ally so that's just more free damage and if we have a way to give it more spirit it'll gain a crap ton of spirit it is two which is very expensive and we could also just skip i kind of like the clash though good band Yeah, Luska, I realize, and maybe maybe there's a better thing to put that gem on. What would you put? What would you put the repeating gem on? The phase gem. I will grab Clash. I think I like that. And yeah, remember that our our dragon spirit. If our dragon spirit didn't have the free block on it, I would say it's a bad choice. But right now it means we have seven block for free every turn. Now the downside is maybe we don't have enough draw to compensate. Do this fight and get some ink. Oh yeah, and I can save mana between turns now. You know what? You're right. And we have so much courage generation, we should start drafting more expensive cards because we can save mana. Yes, you're absolutely right. I'd forgotten about that. Um I mean, holding on, like, repeating the kickflip might not be the worst, because we actually could have a lot of benefit for it. Oh, the Yak is three block. We get three block for free. We can get a decent ink over here. But I think what I'd like to do, I'd like to do the normal fights. I think first, before I use my brush. Oh, th this would reveal a crap ton of territory. It might be worth doing this one. Adorable, the actors to get three block for free. Every one of the fights gives us a. Uh, the normal fights all give us a one random ink, guaranteed. Not a brush. The uh, the elites give us a brush. These give us ink pots. Okay, you know what? I'm just. We're gonna just. You know. What could possibly go wrong? We're just gonna use it because otherwise we're gonna sit here with like decision paralysis forever. Nice one. 
And yeah, it might be a dumb one, but we're gonna do it. All right, let's pop some of these normal fights. Get some ink pots. Still want to get that other gem at some point, too. What the heck are these? Bond of friendship. Seeks revenge if their friend is killed. So I'm assuming these guys go berserk, like for double damage or something, when one of their buddies die. So we'd ideally like to bring them down at the same time, if at all possible. Um, one's attacking for 14. We've got a lot of good swappy dudes back and forth going on here. Although we don't have our cannon for the bonus charge damage, but that's okay. We don't have our ally right now. Like slimes and slay the spire. Um, the slimes don't don't do revenge. Slimes split. Or you think the guys that come back to life. Yeah, two guys attacking for 1x equals one guy attacking for 2x. That is true. But it's a fight that benefits Flash damage. I think it's fine. So we'll start with Shimmer Strike because it does give us power. That's going to be fine. And this guy is going to... Is he buffing and blocking? Yeah, well, let's... Let's target the one who's buffing first. <laughs> could rock out, defend, and then blade dance for a bunch. She'll be in the front, but we'll have a good amount of block. Because we'll have the 6, 9, another 2 over there for 11. I think that's it. So we'll take 3 damage, but I guess it's going to have to be okay. Yeah, these guys are insanely cute. Fugu! Oh, that's, um, is that like a blowfish, right? Defend. Stack a little bit more on this guy. The thing is, I want to avoid to, like, overbleed a guy over here. Because when he dies, presumably the bleed stack will go away. Um, and then I'll still have to kill the other one. I guess it's true. She does deal bonus damage if she's below 50% health. But I don't want her under 50% health. Eventually she'll get under there. So yeah, again, we're just going to play Dragon Spirit now is fine. The free block is very appreciated right now. I think, I suspect the late game scaling might not be like that insane, but for now it's okay. We do have the Mountain Fist for huge block and then some damage here. We got the Kickflip, we've got her ability as well, which I should have used last turn and I forgot about it because I'm a dumb. Well, no, I should have used it last turn. We can even headbang before we Mountain Fist. If I don't Mountain Fist, Defend Strike, I think that the, no, the Mountain Fist is gonna... What if I just defend Mountain Strike? Or mountain Fist, rather. How much damage is incoming? 16, 24. We've got this, the Mountain Fist would bring us to 18. If he ends up in front, which he will, then he'll be 20 blocks. He'll still take four damage. I think I kick flip the one in the back, and then I mountain fist because it just hits the leading enemy. This one a little bleed. Oh, he hit some block. I. Hang on. So the mountain fist will give me eight block and do a one whole point of damage. One whole point of damage. Um, I guess, I guess, in a sense, it'll do six because then the cobalt will be able to hit over here. So it'll give me eight block. On the other hand, what I could do is I could strike the one on the back and defend. I'd get two less block, but I'd establish more bleed on this one. The three free block from the artifacts already factored in. You're right. On this card, he's got five fingers, and on these, he's got four. <laughs> I think that's what I'm gonna do. We will take slightly more damage, but we'll deal a lot more efficient damage by doing this. Guys, I, I'm still forgetting to use my goddamn uh, alacrity here. It's gonna kill me. Forgetting that stuff. Free block! Oh! Forgot it moves me forward. I should have done this first. And then I could have bravery from the back. Oh, I can still hold on. I can still do some of this stuff. I'll do this, because now I can remember to use the alacrity. 
Um, which I will use now. 